Hello everyone, in this video tutorial series, I'll show you some best practices to maximize the performance of your DeepStream application. DeepStream SDK is an accelerated framework to build AI-powered video analytics-based apps and services. The best practices in this video are for NVIDIA computing platforms such as the Jetson Nano, Jetson Xavier NX, and Jetson Xavier AGX, or for discrete GPUs such as the NVIDIA T4. Before running any optimizations, let's make sure that the hardware is set up for maximum performance. If you're using a Jetson, here are a few things that you should do. First, for a Jetson Nano, make sure that you are powered by the Browse Jack adapter and not micro USB. Second, ensure that the power budget on the Jetson device is set to maximum. Run the following commands on your device. sudo nvp model m0 and sudo Jetson clocks. For the Jetson Xavier NX, use sudo nvp model m2. Using a fan is recommended to avoid overheating. For a discrete GPU, there are no specific steps except for ensuring that your GPU is in the PCI slot with the greatest bus width. Since I'm using a discrete GPU, these steps aren't required for me. Now let's look at some common practices that you can use to remove bottlenecks in your application. I'm going to walk through optimizing the DeepStream reference app using the provided config files. The techniques I show can be extended to your own custom applications. Open the config file for DeepStream app. The DeepStream app config files are located in samples, configs, DeepStream app. For this example, I'm using four input sources, each a 1080p video. First, set the batch size of the StreamMux and primary detector to equal the number of input sources. These settings are available un under the stream marks and primary GIE group of the config file respectively. This keeps the pipeline running at full capacity. Higher or lower batch size than the number of input sources can add extra latency in the pipeline. Second, set the height and width of the stream marks to the input stream's resolution, which is 1920 by 1080p for us. This is set under the stream marks group of the config file. This ensures that the stream doesn't go through any unwanted resolution conversion. This extra image scaling can add latency and also increase GPU utilization. Third, if you're streaming from a live source such as an RTSP stream, USB, or CSI camera, then set live source equals 1 in the stream mux group of the config file. This enables proper timestamping for live sources, creating a smoother playback. Fourth, Tyler and visual output can take up GPU resources. There are three things that you can disable to maximize the throughput when you do not need to render the output to your screen. A use case where rendering is not required is when you want to run inference on the edge and transmit just the metadata to the cloud for further processing. To do this, first disable OSD or on-screen display. OSD plugin is used for drawing bounding boxes and other artifacts and adding labels in the output frame. To disable OSD, set enable equal zero in the OSD group of the config file. The tiler creates an n by m grid for displaying the output streams. To disable the tiled output, set enable equal zero in the tiled display group of the config file. And finally, to disable the output sync for rendering, choose fake sync, that is type equals one in the sync group of the config file. Next, let's go through some steps to increase channel throughput by adjusting inference specific settings. AI yeah, inferencing happens on the GPU, but if you're using a Jetson AGX Xavier or Xavier NX, you also have the option of doing inference on the DLA or Deep Learning Accelerator. In this section, we will go through some steps to increase channel throughput by adjusting inference settings. By default, inference is turned on for every frame. Though some critical applications require inferencing every frame, 
For some applications, you can do inference every other frame or every third frame and use a tracker to infer in between frames. DeepStream provided several reference tracker designs to choose from. Here are a few steps to optimize inference. Open the main DeepStream config file. Go to the primary GIE group and open the file that's specified under config file. This is the inference config file. It contains all the settings and parameters for the inference engine. In the inference config file, under property, increase the interval. This is the skip interval, that is, the number of frames to skip in between inference. So an interval of zero means zero skipping, in for every frame, and an interval of one means skip one and in for every other frame. Alternatively, you can also set the interval parameter under the primary GIE section in the main config file. The settings in the main config file will override the parameter in the inference config file, so be careful where you set the parameter. Now let's add a tracker. Go back to the main DeepStream config file. Go to tracker config and change enable equal to 1. The tracker is already enabled for this example. You can also disable the tracker if it's not needed. This can save additional resources. Next, choose the appropriate tracker using the ll-lib-val option. You can choose one of three trackers, IOU, KLT, or NVDCF. For more information on the different types of trackers, refer to the low-level tracker library comparisons and trade-offs in the DeepStream plugin manual. A quick look at that is here. Here are some other tips that can help you optimize inference performance depending on your use case. Choose low precision for inference if it provides comparable accuracy. Going from FP32 to FP16 is fairly straightforward, but if you were to go to int8, you need an int8 calibration cache. This calibration file maps the floating point weights of each layer into integers. This is generally done during the training step. To change the primary inference precision in your DeepStream app, open the primary inference config file. Under property, change the network mode option for FP16 or int8. For this example, we are using int8 mode. To you, if you use int8, you need to provide a calibration file using the int8 calib file option. The reference DeepStream app can also be configured to use a cascaded neural network. The first network is generally a detection network, and the second secondary networks can do some sort of classification on the identified objects in the frame. When you have a secondary network, it is important to use the appropriate batch size. The batch size of the secondary network will typically be higher than the batch size of the primary network. Let's say you have two streams and you want to detect cars and classify each car based on the make of the car in each of the streams. The ideal batch size for primary inference will be two because you have two streams. For an optimum batch size of the secondary inference, you will need to come up with the average number of cars that are detected in each frame and stream and typically set something higher as your batch size. If you set this number too low, then your pipeline will be stored for a long time processing the secondary inference. This will reduce your overall frames per second. Here is how you can use secondary inference in DeepStream app. Open the main DeepStream app config file. Go to the secondary GIE group. This example shows multiple SGIE and you can add more. Under the secondary GIE group, set enable equal to one. For us, SGIE zero is already enabled. The secondary GIE specific inference file is set by the config file under it. You can also reduce the number of inferences of the secondary inference engine by filtering out the objects to infer from the primary. Set the following parameters in the secondary inference config file to filter out very large or very small objects from secondary inference.
There are several tools available to profile your hardware to check for compute utilization. If you're using the Jetson platform, run the Tegra stats command. This shows CPU, GPU and other utilization. Since Tegra stats is not available inside the DeepStream container, it should be run in a shell outside the container. If you're using a discrete GPU, then run the NVIDIA SMI command. This shows various utilization fields. For extensive profiling, you can also use NVIDIA Insight systems. This can help you identify bottlenecks in your application and help you optimize performance. Alright, that brings us to the end of this tutorial where we learned how to tune the DeepStream Reference app, uh, an end-to-end -end reference application that is packaged with the SDK. The source code for this app is provided in the Sources, Apps, Sample Apps, DeepStream directory. The optimization steps in this tutorial can be applied to your own custom applications as well. To learn more about the different knobs that you can tune in the reference applications, please refer to documentation underneath.